I want to call your attention in this service to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 6. And I begin reading in your hearing at verse 1, but I want you to go back in your quiet moments to chapter 3 and read up through the end of this chapter right here. That'll give you the context out of which we shall attempt to teach and preach. I started a new series at the 8 o'clock service uh, for this month, really, I started it Wednesday night in Bible study. Uh, we're talking about uh, finding and following your North Star. Uh, finding and following your North Star. This is the month of vision. This is the month where uh, we encourage you and hopefully equip and empower you to envision beyond where you are and dream of a better day. And so, uh, in light of that, and this being, what, 400 years since we were forced and brought here. Uh, of course, we had been here uh, long before that, so much evidence uh, of that uh, that we'll talk about later on. But when we actually were forced, uh, it started in 1619. And so uh, one of the ways that we overcame being forced was finding and following our North Star. And so uh, we'll be dealing with that this month. And in the 8 o'clock service, uh, we looked at the book of Habakkuk, uh, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 4. And uh, we dealt with that and talked about uh, what it means to, uh, work in, to uh, work in the dark to develop our picture. That's how you get your vision, by working in the dark. I want to look now at chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, from the New International Version translation. Hear God's word. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty hand, he will let them go. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out of his country. God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac. And Jacob is God Almighty, but my name, the Lord, I did not make myself fully known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they resided as foreigners. Moreover, I've heard the groaning of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians, I will free you from being slaves to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians and I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Moses reported this to the Israelites, but they did not listen to him because of their discouragement and harsh labor. You may be seated in God's presence. I want to put a tag on this text, and for a few moments with your prayers, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach, a broken-winged bird cannot fly. A broken-winged bird bird cannot fly. One of my favorite shows is Insecure, which is the brainchild of the visionary Issa Rae. Issa Rae, this past season, had a very interesting season. Issa Rae, if I were to summarize it by way of relationships, challenges us to always evaluate relationships. Why? Because if you're not careful, you can invest yourself in relationships that bankrupt you. I think I'll do that again. If you're not careful, you will invest all that you are in a relationship that leaves you emotionally and spiritually bankrupt. May I say it where you can tweet it? Stop investing who you are and what you are in people who simply take from you, train you, and never reinvest in you. In a real sense, you can invest in other people until you end up bankrupt and they end up wealthy. 
because they spent their time taking from you as opposed to reinvesting in you. Well, the amazing thing is that there was an episode where Easter ran into her ex. I think you know her ex is named Lawrence. And when she ran into Lawrence, my sisters and brothers, Lawrence asked how she's doing. It's awkward at first. And then they engage in conversation. And as they engage in conversation, listen to what Lawrence does. Lawrence asks about what she's doing in her career because Lawrence has been a part of her past. And when Lawrence raises that question, here's what Issa does. Issa so at first begins to speak about the lofty plans and the noble dreams that she has. And then in the same breath, she starts to talk herself out of those lofty ideals and noble dreams. And Lawrence interprets and says, I see you are still getting in your own head. I'll park right there parenthetically because somebody came to church and already I just got in your Kool-Aid. I called out your flavor. Because just like Issa Rae, in the same breath, you can dream noble dreams and think high thoughts about what you would like to do with your life. But the next thing you know, you get in your own head and start talking yourself out of what you have been dreaming about. I park right there because somebody's looking at me right now. I don't know you, but God brought you to Friendship West. And here's the deal. You are getting in your own way because you keep getting in your own head. And the longer you get in your head, the more you stay in your own way. And when you get in your head, you end up coming up with alibis for why you can't do what it is you dream of doing. Hear this. Whenever you engage in an alibi, you have set yourself up with a lie. Preach, Freddie Haynes. I think I'm already doing it. And many of us have never gotten where God is trying to take us because we engage in giving alibis that become lies that lock us up beneath our potential and possibility. Here is Issa Rae. Issa Rae comes and runs into Lawrence who is from her past and she soon discovers that someone from her past acquainted with her past lets her know that she is still doing in the present what had messed her up in the past. May I stop right here? Because a lot of you are talking about what you're going to do in 2019. I hope you get it done exceedingly abundantly above anything you can ask or imagine. But if you are not careful, you will end up doing the same thing in 19 that you did in 18 because you get in your head. And when you get in your head, you will get in your way. Preach Freddie Haynes. I'm about to do that. And my sisters and brothers, I I've discovered that oftentimes we are guilty of getting in our head, which precludes us from getting ahead because what's behind us is still confining us. May I do that one more time? It's hard to get ahead when you are in your head, but you are in your head because there's something behind you that is still defining you. Preach Freddie Haynes. Here it is. My sisters and brothers, metaphorically, I came across something that blew my mind. It's the story, true story, of a plane, a Boeing, a Boeing 767-300 that was scheduled to fly last year. What? from Newark Airport in New Jersey to Venice. Now check this. I imagine.